a male, like a male, male call. Hey Rock Youth, we've had a great time going over our series, The Fruit of the Spirit. And recap, we're going to play a little game we like to call Fruit Bash. So the first week we talked about love and we learned that God teaches us to show love through all of our actions. You ready? Ready. Ah. Boy. What's up, Rock Youth? Our second fruit of the Spirit was joy. And we want you guys to remember, joy is always unshaken when you're a follower of Jesus. You ready, bro? Yes! Crushed it. <laughs> Get a piece of this action. All right, the next fruit of the spirit that we talked about was peace. And remember, we talked about how anxiety is imagining the future without Jesus in it. But peace is recognizing Jesus' presence in the here and the now. Ready, Luke? Two and one. Double whammy. Our first double whammy. The next fruit of the spirits that we did were patience and kindness. And guys, remember, true love in action looks like patience and kindness. Oh, it's so juicy. Did you see that dodge? If you can dodge a fruit, you can dodge a ball. Alright, I'm up next. I thought that one's for self-control. All right, guys, the next fruit of the Spirit that we talked about was goodness and faithfulness. And we learned that goodness is virtue and holiness in action. Yeah! yeah right up there, dude. Jonathan, why didn't you say anything? <laughs> oh, okay, okay, yeah. Our next fruit of the Spirit was gentleness. And always remember, guys, that when we think of gentleness, think of Jesus. All right, guys, our last fruit is self-control, so make sure you grab your Bible and take some notes. It's going to be a good one. All right, what's up guys? I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, and as we said, we're gonna be concluding our series on the fruit of the spirit today, and we're gonna be talking about self-control. So would you pray with me? God, we just pray right now, Lord, that you would speak to us, speak through me to these students. And Lord, as we transition back into an online uh, youth platform, God, I just pray that um, you'd be with us in this season as we know you will be. Lord, make it abundantly clear to us what you're asking of us uh, as we venture into the unknown. However long uh, we're going to be sheltered in our homes again, God, we don't know, but we trust in you, Jesus. And Lord, as we talk about self-control, may we uh, genuinely um, desire this in our life, and we know that we have it as the fruit of the Spirit. So we love you, and we praise you. Amen. Well, um, like I said, we're concluding Fruit of the Spirit today, and we're talking about self-control. Um, and we obviously, this whole series, we've been camped in uh, Galatians 5, and this is what it says in verses 22 and 23. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. And it was kind of interesting that we started this series uh, online, uh, which was six weeks ago, and uh, Luke started us off talking about love, and then we were able to transition back and start having services again. Uh, and we talked about 
uh, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. And then today we're back on an online presence uh, and we're doing self-control. I just thought that was interesting how it kind of bookends um, and it's interesting. It's a weird time, but we're going to get through it together. Um, and we've got a lot of cool things that we're planning um, to get you guys really immersed in our community and really uh, know that you have connection with other students and with your leaders. But um, really quick, I have a story to tell you. So last week, me and some friends went up to Tahoe, uh, as everybody's been doing lately. We went up to Tahoe for a day, and it was really fun. Uh, we just went up there to golf and hang out and just kind of mess around. And usually whenever we do those kinds of trips, there's a lot of food involved, okay? So uh, Sunday night, last Sunday, we drove up to Roseville, stayed with my family, and then Monday morning, uh, my mom like laid out donuts and bagels and all this stuff. And I'm not a breakfast guy, but I ate, I ate a bunch of food, okay? Um, and then, so I'm already full, right? It's like already morning. I don't eat breakfast usually, so I'm already full. We drove up to Truckee and then we got this place called Jack's Diner for lunch. Um, and again, we all ate a lot. So afterwards, I'm like, okay, this is, I'm at my, I'm, I'm tapped. I don't need to eat anymore today. I'm fine. Just keep all the food away from me. Like I don't even want it, right? And then uh, we play around to golf, and after golf, of course, I'm hungry. So we drove back up to Reno, and we were like, okay, there's a million things that we could eat. Took forever to decide what we were gonna eat. So finally, where did we end up? In the Del Taco drive-thru, okay? And if you've ever had Del Taco, it's like, in my opinion, the best cheap fast food. I spent $5, and I got so much food, it was like enough to feed a small military, okay? Like, it was, it was disgusting and amazing at the same time. And I'm like in the line, right? We're in the drive-thru and I'm like, okay, Aaron, self-control, right? You don't need to eat a lot. Just get a couple tacos. You're gonna be good. You're not even hungry right now. You ever eat like just, you're not even hungry, but you're just bored. So you start eating. That happens to me all the time. But uh, we're in line and I'm trying to convince myself. I'm, okay, I'm not gonna eat a lot. Sure enough, we, we roll up to the, to the menu and I was like, oh my gosh, 79 cent tacos. It's a dollar for these little crunch wrap things. Like, yes, please, right? So I order five or six bucks worth of food. That's it. But it was so much. We're sitting in the parking lot, we're unwrapping all these burritos and tacos and I'm just slamming food. I'm like, I'm not even hungry. Why am I doing this, right? And of course, at, like in the moment, I'm like, oh, it tastes so good though. I love this. And then five minutes after we finish eating, we're throwing away all of our trash and I feel like trash, okay? Like it was disgusting. I regretted it instantly that I ate it. And um, as we're talking about self-control today, it's pretty abundantly clear that in that situation, I didn't have any self-control. Uh, I knew what I ought to do. I knew that I shouldn't have eaten that food, um, but I did anyways. I didn't, I didn't have self-control. I just uh, gave in to an impulse or, or, or something that I wanted, and I knew that it was not good for me. Obviously, it doesn't take a scientist to know that Del Taco is not the best for your body, but I did it anyways, right? And I didn't even need it. Um, and that's the funny thing about self-control is a lot of times we talk about self-control, um, but it's hard to understand. And it's not something that we desire because we know that it's going to take a sacrifice. We know that self-control is this mindset of saying no. It's saying no to temptation. It's saying no to some impulses and desires that we have. And as I was looking at the fruit of the spirit, right, love, joy, peace, patience, and all the rest, all of, the, almost all of them were like, yeah, these are great, I want that. Who doesn't want love in their life? Who doesn't want peace in their life? Who doesn't want joy and, and faithfulness and gentleness and all the fruits of the spirit? But then we get to the end and it's interesting, it's almost like it was intentional of when Paul wrote it, that self-control is the last thing. Because we look at self-control, we're like, I don't really know if I want that, you know? Like, I, I like giving in to what I want. I, I like eating a bunch of food, or I like watching this thing, or I like listening to this music, or watching this YouTuber, or this TikToker, I think that's the way that you say it, this account on TikTok, right? Like, I like doing these things. I don't want to have self-control, because self-control means sacrifice. And we look at self-control as if it's a bad thing. But man, I wanna encourage you right now that, that um, self-control in your life, that developing that in your life, stewarding self-control is gonna bring you deeper in your relationship with God so um, so much. Like you'll have a deeper relationship with Jesus when you begin to desire uh, self-control and actually walk, excuse me, walk in it. And this is what it says in scripture um, in Titus chapter two, starting in verse 11. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, 
upright and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. I want to read that first part again. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. So the grace of God, when I give my life to Jesus, when I receive the Holy Spirit in my life, he teaches me and walks with me and strides with me and he teaches me how to say no. And, and that's not something that we typically already know how to do in our flesh. It's very difficult for us to say no to some things because we have urges and desires and things that we wanna do or look at or listen to or enjoy or entertain. But I wanna say this, sometimes no is the key to living the life that God designed you for. I'm gonna say that again, that sometimes the word no, living with and, and saying the word no in a certain situation is the key to living the life that God designed you and wired you for. And when I give in to temptation or when you give in to temptation, when you know that something is wrong and you choose not to have self-control in that moment, this might sting, but basically what you're saying is, God does not know what's best for me, I know what's best for me. You're saying that, I know God, you have like, you're right and wrong, your standards and all that stuff, but I'm gonna put that to the side for a second because this thing's calling my name and I really want it. And what you're saying is, I know what's best for me and God does not. But really what I wanna say in personally in my life, that God is way better at leading me than I am at leading myself. Um, and uh, the last few days, it was interesting, me, the last few days, me and Cassidy were up in Tahoe again with some other friends, and um, it was a really fun time. And uh, some of our friends, Pastor Matt Klosterman and his wife Adriana, were up there with their baby Isaiah. And um, it was really fun. Isaiah is almost two, uh, or he's a year and a half old. He's just starting to talk, and he's running and walking around and everything. And it's funny because there'll be situations where Isaiah will be running around, and he'll want to touch something or do something, and Pastor Matt will say, Isaiah think of the consequences. Or he'll say, Isaiah, you, like, he'll, he'll warn him, but he won't just go over and like grab him and say no. And the and God is the same with some of us uh, and with all of us, I would say, that a lot of times we find ourselves in situations and we're tempted and God can easily just send down an angel in that moment, right? And I'm going to get real for a second. Maybe you're by yourself in your, in your bedroom and you really want to watch that thing or do that thing that you know you shouldn't do. And God, in his goodness, could just, you know, send down an angel and just shut the whole situation down. He could totally do that, right? But sometimes God leaves it up to us. He's, he gives us the opportunity to walk in self-control. Like I said, with Pastor Matt and Isaiah, he doesn't just go over and grab him. He will if he's in danger. But other times he'll give him the opportunity to choose the right thing rather than the wrong thing. And obviously, none of us are perfect. We make mistakes but God is so gracious with us and he gives us opportunities to learn self-control and to grow in that. So I want to talk for a few minutes just on how do we walk in self-control? How do we walk in self-control? Because we could talk about it, but I want to give you the tools to do it. And the first is this, and if you're writing this down, I want you to write down uh, how do I walk in self-control or self-control. And number one is this, that we recognize that we have it in us. We recognize as believers that you have self-control inside of you. And we've been talking about this over the last six weeks with all the fruits of the Spirit. If you've given your life to Jesus, you have the fruits of the Spirit in you. You have God's love. You have peace. You have joy and all the rest. And that means you also have self-control. These are things that are inside of you because you have the Holy Spirit, whether you know it or not. And it says this in 1 Timothy 1.7, and I love this verse. It's one of my favorites. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Others say, other translations say a sound mind, um, it, but this is the English Standard Version. It says, for God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. So the spirit that God has given us, the Holy Spirit that's inside of us, is one of power and love and self-control. We have it in us to say no to temptation. You have it in you to say no in the face of temptation in the, and in the face of, a, of something that you really want to do, but you know it's wrong. You actually have it in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. Uh, like I said, you're free to say no, and you are not a slave to your body or your urges or desires. I want to say that again. You are not enslaved to the temptations that you're faced with. You don't have to say no. 
or I mean, I'm sorry, you don't have to say yes. You have the opportunity to say no. You actually can. And I know that sounds profound. It's like, of course, like obviously I can say no or yes, it's up to me. But I want you to get that in your heart, that you are not a slave to the temptation that you find yourself faced with. You are not a slave to the thing that you desire to give into. You can say no. And it's like the rest of the fruits of, spirit, of the Spirit. Like I said, you have it in you, but it's recognizing that. It's recognizing, oh yeah, the Spirit that dwells in me is one of love and is one of peace and one of joy and one of self-control. I don't have to give into these urges and these desires and I don't have to watch that thing because I have self-control in me. Um, now, the next part of this, which is really important, number two is this, that we picture the results of our actions. We picture the results. You picture the future of what the future is going to look like if you give in to that temptation. The moment that you have the opportunity to walk in self-control and, and, and you're tempted and you want to give in to something, I want to encourage you with this. Take a moment, close your eyes, and picture the result. Picture what's going to happen because of your action. And it says this in Proverbs 16, 32, better to be patient than powerful, better to have self-control than to conquer a city. And I really want to hone in on this verse, Proverbs 25, 28. A person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. A person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. Lacking self-control makes us open and vulnerable to all kinds of attack. It makes the enemy's job a whole lot easier when you don't have self-control because honest, it, I'm just being honest, if you don't walk in self-control, the devil's just gonna keep throwing stuff your way. He's gonna say, watch this, listen to this, hang out with these people, do this thing, smoke this and drink that. And if you don't have self-control, if you're not, or I, I should say, if you're not walking in the self-control that is that comes from the Holy Spirit, if you're not walking that, then the devil's got free reign in your life because he's gonna introduce you to certain things and without the self-control that comes from the Holy Spirit, man, you're just going to say yes every single time. But that's why I said earlier, sometimes no is the key to living the life that God designed you to live. And I, wanna, I want you to ask yourself this. And I'm going to get very personal in a few minutes about my uh, a, a season of life, I should say, where I had to say or have self-control a lot. But I want you to ask yourself this, this simple question. Is this worth it? Is this worth it? When you're faced with a temptation, when the next time you are faced with, you want to watch, you, you want to watch that thing. And obviously, let's just let's just call it what it is. A lot of students. This is not just students, but people worldwide. It's pornography. It's it's sex before marriage. It's drinking. It's it's vaping or smoking. All these types of things. But the next time you are faced with whatever temptation you're faced with. Ask yourself this question, is it worth it? Is it worth the trauma and the guilt and the shame that you are going to go through? And obviously guilt and shame do not come from God. Conviction comes from God. It comes from the Holy Spirit. Shame and guilt do not. But you have to ask yourself the question, is this worth it for me? Is this going to, is this going to be good for me? Is this going to edify my soul? Is this going to bring me closer to God or make me feel distant from Him? And the third thing that we need to do to walk in self-control, the self-control that comes from the Holy Spirit. The third thing is this, we shift our desires by going deeper with God. We shift our desires by going deeper with God. And um, earlier in Galatians chapter five, uh, obviously we've been in Galatians 5, 22 and 23 for this whole series, but I wanna rewind to the beginning or a little bit the middle of Galatians five. And it says this, and it's my life verse actually, you, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. That's Galatians 5.13. You, my brothers, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature, but rather serve one another in love. And then he goes on, he says, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. And I, I love what Paul says. He says, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. In essence, what he's saying is, every day, walk hand in hand with Jesus, because I guarantee you, 
the deeper your relationship with God, the more you will hate sin. It is a very easy equation. The more that you love God, the more that you go deep with him and you're in prayer and you're worshiping him and you're pursuing him, the more that you will hate sin and everything about it. I'm not saying you're not gonna struggle anymore. I'm not saying that your pornography addiction is just gonna disappear. And I'm gonna share about that in a minute. I'm not saying that at all, but what I am saying is the more that you love God and you pursue him and spend time in his word, the more it's gonna just taste disgusting to give in to sin. Your soul is gonna start just, it's it's gonna feel like you're putting unleaded gas in a Ferrari. That's what it's gonna feel like because you know your identity in Jesus. You're pursuing him and you're going after him, but then there's this thing on the side and the more that you spend time with God, you're gonna realize that's not for me. Why am I even entertaining this? And maybe you're, you've had a, a, an issue with pornography, and I'm really dealing with that a lot in this message, but maybe that's been your struggle of what you watch online, what you're uh, allowing yourself to see, what you're allowing into your mind. And it's been a struggle for years and years and years. And you're like, Aaron, I pray, I see God, I don't know what to do. Well, I encourage you, begin to walk in self-control. Begin to, and, and get accountability around you. And I'm getting ahead of myself, but uh, because I have a lot to say on that topic. But man, when we shift our desires by going deeper with God, I promise you the next time you're faced with a temptation, you're gonna weigh it out. You're gonna weigh out what your life is gonna look like if I give in and if I say no. And if you, and if you say no and you, and, you give in, or, and you don't give in to sin, you're basically saying, you know, I, I desire to go deeper with God rather than this sin, rather than give in to this. And like I said, I promise you, you begin to pursue Jesus with everything you have and sin will be able to, or sin will begin to taste disgusting in your life. And it's, and um, like I said, I, I've been very open with our youth ministry about my history with pornography. And um, it was something that, that really was a part of my life for a long time. Um, I would venture to say probably six or seven years of, of dealing with it and not telling anybody, not even, not, not telling my youth pastor, not telling my parents, um, when me and my wife started dating, not even telling her, like it was, it was like really bad. Right. And I didn't want to tell anybody because I was shameful and had guilt. And I just, I thought I could deal with it myself and everything, but I'll never forget what began to happen when I began to, to come before God and say, Lord, I recognize that you still love me and that you want me to go deeper with you despite this problem. And as I began to walk with Jesus, as I began to pray, like earnestly pray, like I still have prayers from 2010, 2011, nine or 10 years ago of of the beginning stages of me praying through this problem and asking God, Lord, I need you to help me through this. I need you to to rid my life of this. I need a a supernatural breakthrough, right? asking God to come into those moments and help me in his strength. And man, I still have prayer journals full of prayers asking God. And I'm, I'm at this place of, in the stage of my life of walking in freedom. But it's not because of how hard I worked, but it's because I planted the seeds, so to speak, in my life of saying, you know what? I am not gonna be okay with this and I'm gonna give it to God and I need self-control. And I can only get that from the Spirit of God because trying so hard and just saying, I'm gonna do better, I'm gonna be better, I'm gonna be a better Christian, I'm not gonna deal with this anymore. God, I promise I'm not gonna do it anymore, right? Like all that is is good, I guess, but it's not gonna really make a difference. And maybe maybe that is what you're struggling with today. And you you don't wanna tell anybody about it, you don't even wanna tell me or Pastor Maxwell, you don't wanna tell your parents, you don't wanna tell anybody in your life. I promise you this, you begin to seek God, you begin to pray desperate prayers that he would remove this from your life, and you get accountability around you. You start talking to your pastors, you start talking to even your parents. I know that sounds terrifying, and I guarantee you it will begin to flip the script in your life, and God will begin to pour out a breakthrough that you couldn't imagine in your life. And maybe it's not pornography. Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's gossip. Maybe it's you're addicted to Instagram or to TikTok or whatever the case may be. Maybe it's maybe it's just slander. Maybe it's bullying. Like you have this like addiction to bullying, and you're like, I need the self control to say no and to stop being mean to people. Whatever it is, you begin to get with God and begin to love God more than you love that sin. And I promise you, your life will begin to change because God will say, now we can start doing some work. 
because you actually trust him. You actually trust God with your problems rather than running from him in shame. And it's interesting. I've been, you know, talking to a few students lately who are just, you know, struggling through a few things and everything. And I, I've been feeling this and I wanted to share it with our youth ministry. And, and it's this simple idea that God knows where you are and he is not afraid of it. God knows exactly where you are spiritually, physically, emotionally, and mentally, and he is not afraid of it. God's not afraid of your mess. God's not afraid of your problems. He's not afraid of your hurts or your habits or your hangups. But he wants to know you, and he wants to come into the midst of the problem that you find yourself with. For me, it was pornography. And, and I would be lying if I would say that in the last year, there haven't been moments of, of thinking back on my history with that and saying, man, oh, like there's temptation or whatever, but I always come back to the question, is it worth it? And the answer is a resounding no, because God is so much better and he's so much sweeter. And I love intimacy with Jesus. And I don't want to do, I don't want to go back to that in my life. I want to look forward to what God has for me rather than revisiting the past. And I've, I heard one preacher say one time, the past should be a point of reference, not a place of residence. We don't live in our past. We don't obsess over our past and say, well, this, the past is what defines me. No, the blood of Jesus is what defines you. You are made free and you are made whole because of God. And you don't have to give in to any sin or temptation because you have the Holy Spirit in you. So if you need self-control, which we all do, I need it when I'm eating, I need it like with everything, every aspect of my life. We all need this self-control. So get with God in worship. And we're gonna close in, in one moment with just one more song of worship. And I encourage you, wherever you are, if you're in your bedroom, get on your knees and begin to cry out to God and say, Lord, I'm here and I'm a mess. I don't know what to do. I'm anxious, I'm worried, I'm struggling with this sin and I need you to come into it. I need you to, to, to move in this. Help me, give me strength, give me breakthrough. And I promise you will begin to see God move in a way that you could have never imagined. But we seek him and we learn to love him more than we obsess over the feelings or the, or the, the, the good vibes, whatever, of giving into a certain sin. So I wanna pray for you and then we're gonna get back into worship. So Father, I pray Lord, that every single student watching this message and God, even myself, that you would give us a new level of self-control when we're faced with temptation. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that we have self-control because it's the fruit of the Spirit. And Lord, we thank you for the past six weeks that we've learned about love and joy and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control, God. Lord, may we walk in these things, not just have them stored up inside of us, but rather may they overflow in our relationships with people, with our parents, with our siblings, Lord, with, our, with fellow students. And Lord, even in our time with you, may you make us more gentle, more loving. Fill us with the fruit of the Spirit today. We love you, God. I pray any student who is struggling, especially with pornography, God, I just pray in Jesus' name right now that you would break that spirit in our entire youth ministry. Lord, that teenagers and preteens all over uh, this valley, Lord, would begin to just be, the, the chains of pornography and sex, sexual addiction would be broken. And Lord, we thank you that we don't shy away from talking about that, Lord, because it is a, it is a real problem, but we know that your spirit is greater and is powerful. Break those chains, Lord. We love you. We believe in faith that you're going to do it. In Jesus' name. And everyone at home said, amen. All right, let's jump back into worship, guys. We love you. Um, and make sure to stay tuned with everything else we got going on here at The Rock Youth. And we'll see you soon.
God, you put. 